Okay guys, today we're going to talk about trolling. Uh, a few videos ago, we went fishing and we went trolling for um, Mahi Mahi. And uh, I wanted to talk about that, you know, it's uh, something that we all do here in South Florida. If you go outside in the ocean a little bit, you're gonna see all these shatters um, trolling all over the place. It's, uh, it's pretty much crazy, you know. Sometimes it really drives you crazy with that because if you're trying to fish uh, bottom fishing or something like that, they will just non-stop next to you and they will drive you crazy. But it's something that really works. It's something that really, um, it's not that complicated to do. So let's get into it. Let's talk about lures. Okay, the first thing that I want to remind you about lures is this is only a tool, guys. This is something that you shouldn't go crazy on it because there is so many options out there that they will drive you crazy. So the first thing you have to think about lures when you're gonna buy lures is gonna be can my lure match whatever the bait is out there at this season? Let's call it like that. And uh, that's more or less the only thing that you have to think about. Of course, the size of the of the lure depends on what you're looking for, but you know, in this little lure here, I had mahis, I had tunas, I had kingfish, I had pretty much everything you can imagine. The only thing I haven't catch in those guys is Wahoo and, and um, you know blue marlin and those we're gonna talk about them that kind of fishing in another video. Right now we want to focus on this, which is uh, mahi mahi, um, tuna, kingfish, bonita, pretty much anything else that is out there. And this is the kind of lures. Okay, this one over here we call it a feather. As you can see, it's plastic on the outside. And it has feathers on the inside, and this one. It's something that I like to fish just like that, without any bait attaching to it, just the way it is. And this worked perfect, guys. Okay? This saw the one we call it the Islander or the Bullet. And this one I like to fish it with a bait over here. I just pass through a bait and I put the hooks on the bait. And this is something that I will pull behind my boat. And it's really, really effective. Okay? This one, uh, we call it, it's kind of like a popper. You pull behind your boat and what it does is it creates a lot of bubbles and make this thing look really, really big. So the fish go crazy with this and believe it, uh, it doesn't matter how much noise and whatever it does, the fish will go crazy for this. So these are great options to have behind your boat. And this one, of course, is the Arbapala Magnum. This thing work all the time. They, they work, they are great, and normally when you are pulling a bunch of different rods behind your uh, boat, these guys are gonna swim deeper and these guys are gonna bring the biggest fish. So keep in mind, I'm gonna, I'm gonna create a little layout here of how you should set up your rods and everything, but this guy will always be in your spread and this guy will always, always work for you. So keep it in mind, guys. Okay, let's talk about the rod, guys. This is a 30 to 50 pounds uh, rod. It's an Ocean Master six footer. This is one of the best rods I ever had. And uh, it's, it's awesome, the things that it does. And I hook it up with an Avid. Um, this is the LX. This is a really, really nice um, reel. This, I use it for uh, trolling, I use it for kai fishing. I, I, I pretty much use this thing for everything, for bottom fishing. They are monsters, guys. If They are a little expensive, but if you can get your hands on it, this is something that will last you for a long, long time, and it's gonna bring you a lot of satisfaction. So, more or less, all my setups are like this. Uh, I like to match all my rods together more or less with the same setup so it doesn't matter what rod you jump into 
it would always work exactly the same way as the other ones that you are got used to it already. So it's a lot easier process trying to get two, three, four fish behind the boat and uh, it can get a little chaotic. So the less stress you put on yourself, the easier it's gonna be for you to get all those good fish. Okay, let's talk a little bit about the process. What do we do? The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the feather out there. The feather is a lure that is gonna go by itself. It's not gonna go with any bait. And I will put it right in the middle of the boat with one of my best rods. And I'm gonna give it 200 to 250 yards of line. And pretty much all my reels, they can hold 500 yards of line. So I'm not worried about fighting a big fish or something like that. If I get a big fish, I will still have 250 yards on my reel to fight them, all right? So this guy is gonna go out there, and it's gonna go by himself. Why? Because uh, pretty much once you put it out there, nobody wants to deal with it. If you got a fish in here, there is not gonna be a lot of people on the boat fighting to bring it in because it's a long way. <laughs> and uh, if, if, um, if you put a bait in here, this thing is gonna watch out pretty fast and you don't wanna be reeling in and out a long lure just to put a bait on it. So that's what I do. I put this guy 250 yards away from the boat and I just let it be, all right? The next I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get my Islanders. In my Islanders, I'm gonna put a ballyhoo in here. Pretty much all the fish here in Florida, they eat ballyhoo. Ballyhoo is the best, you know, besides Bonita, ballyhoo is the best bait. So I will put a ballyhoo in here and I will let this guy go back about 100 yards from the boat. And I will keep it in there. And remember, I'm gonna have two of these. The only condition that I have is that these two islanders, they will swim parallel to each other. And why is that? It's because pretty much all bay fish, they swim in patterns. And uh, you know, once you have a predator out there looking for fish and they look up and they see something cruising around, at 10 miles per hour <laughs> they won't be thinking about ah, is that a fake one is that a real one no they might look at the pattern and take a decision based on that okay so after the islanders i will send my plugs and my plugs are going to go about 50 yards from the boat. I will try to keep these guys close and you're going to see that they make a lot of noise they make a lot of bubbles uh, it's a really, really nice thing to have. Sometimes I would put a bait on this, sometimes I won't. It all depends. If it's, uh, if it's too rough out there, I would just let it go like that. If it's not too rough that I can just go and do it quick and stuff like that, I would put a bait on it. But it doesn't really make a lot of difference, all right? Then after that, in my last rod, I'm going to put the rapala. And the rapala, I'm gonna put it really close to the boat, right behind the motor. And I'm gonna let this guy sink as much as possible. I think this one sink for 20 feet, but uh, I also fish this one here. That's a big boy, isn't it? And this guy, he goes down for 40 feet. So I will keep it right behind the boat, and I will make sure that it swims right. For you to know that those rapalas are swimming right, all you have to do is look at the rod and the rod have to be moving in the tip. If they're moving, that's perfect. If they're not moving, you get some grass or some stuff like that, so you will have to pick it up. So what happens when you get a bite? Let's say you have a fish and people start going crazy. Never slow down, never. Give it 20 seconds, man. And what happens is, Mahi Mahi, they swim in packs. Blackfin tuna, they swim in packs. So, you know, once you get one of the fish in the hook, you might have 20 other fish in there trying to get the other bait. And you will just freak them out when you slow down. So let it be. Keep going for 20 seconds on the same speed. And then after that, you won't stop anyway. You will just slow down. You will go, let's say, half of the same speed you were going before it. So if you were driving 10 miles per hour, you will go up down to five, 4.95. So that's what you will do. Now, let's say you have a fish in the Islander. 
if you have a fish in the island there, you will have to first make sure that all the other ones that are at the same distance or less distance than the rod that is bitten, they will have to come in. So the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna pick your rapala. Second thing you're gonna do is you're gonna pick both of your poppers. And then after that, you will reel in the other islander that was swimming next to this guy. And after that, you will start fighting your fish. Of course, you can have somebody fighting the fish a little bit, but not putting a lot of pressure on it. What happens is the fish, when they bite, they don't just swim straight at you. They swim left and right, up, up and down, and they will make a big tangle if, if you have a bunch of lines out there. So make sure that you pick all the other lines first and then you start fighting your fish. And that's one of the things you don't slow down because you want to make sure that you can get two, three fish and you don't have to bring all those lines in for no reason. All right, what happens if they, if you get the bite on the, the feather <laughs> you have to bring them all in man you have to bring them all in and then you have to fight the feather but that's how it works okay guys as you know i have a kind of decent boat it's a 25 footer and i i i can do six rods with no problem i can I, i'm pretty sure i can do eight without having a problem with this kind of configuration but uh you know six is plenty but don't worry man if you only have two rods go with two rods. If you only have a kayak, go with a kayak. It doesn't matter. It will produce if you do it right. Just put your time in there. This is the way I do it. And if you've never done it, this is a great point for you to start. If you've done it and uh, maybe I'm telling you something that you didn't know, check it out, give it a try and get out there. Do it, do it, do it. This is Salty Tales. And remember that I love you.